fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. On the outbreak of hostilities, this easternmost outpost of the British Empire instantly rejected the Japanese ultimatum to surrender and girded itself to fight the invaders. Japan had a hunger for power, so they chose to invade China. This caused enormous suffering to the Chinese, which forced the Allies into action. This action was to cut the sale of oil supplies to Japan, which would cripple their forces. Therefore, the Japanese planned to attack the Dutch East Indies to obtain a new supply of oil. However, if they were to do so, they would also need to occupy the surrounding areas that were under the Allied forces, otherwise the British and American navies would be able to intercept their oil tankers. And so they attacked Singapore, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Pearl Harbor, and Indonesia to successfully regain access to oil. This then caused the Battle of Hong Kong. At around 8 o'clock in the morning on December the 8th, the Japanese bombed Hong Kong and Kowloon and their army crossed down from China into the new territories. Christopher Maltby, the garrison commander of the British, had only 3,000 men occupying that part of Kowloon and the new territories, where really you probably needed 10,000 to successfully defend it. So the battle didn't last long. There was a small engagement at the Xingmeng Redoubt, a bigger one at Golden Hill, and then after Golden Hill fell, Maltby realized that the only thing he could really do was evacuate Kowloon and bring all the troops, the Indians and the British, back to Hong Kong Island. And that was achieved by about early in the morning on December the 13th. So by December the 13th, the Japanese occupied the whole of Kowloon from New Territories through the city down into Chim Sha Choi. And then the Japanese brought out the big guns and from the period December the 13th through to December the 18th they shelled and they bombed the whole of Hong Kong Island that was focusing on that north shore. Mid-levels was very badly hit, many of the buildings there were destroyed. The big buildings like the Bowen Road Military Hospital, typically they were hit by a hundred or more shells each. Most importantly the Japanese were attacking military installations like the pillboxes and many of the pillboxes which would defend the north coast of the island were very badly hit, in some cases even destroyed. By the evening of December the 18th the Duro paint factory was on fire and under cover of darkness, bad weather, it was raining slightly and the smoke from the Duro paint factory on the evening of December the 18th the Japanese made their seaborne assault on Hong Kong Island itself. At the start of the Japanese occupation, the streets of Hong Kong were relatively crowded and people had not yet encountered the full wrath of the Japanese. However, as time went on, people soon came to realize the ways in which the Japanese ruled. As they ruled with the intention of reducing the population of the territory, many left voluntarily, many more were expelled, and as many as 250,000 citizens died. This loss of population came with many consequences such as reduced food supplies, lack of education, cutting off of medical services, heavy inflation in the military yen, which had replaced the Hong Kong dollar, and so forth. But fortunately, by the middle of 1945, the end of the war was at hand. When Hong Kong fell to the Japanese at the end of December 1941, all the military men who'd been captured and all the enemy civilians were put in camps. The enemy civilians were put in Stanley Camp, the military internees were put in Sham Shui Po, Agao Street, Ma Tao Chong, and North Point. And there they suffered for three years and eight months, almost four years, from boredom, hunger, disease, and death. It wasn't a very pleasant experience by any means. In fact, around 10% of the garrison had been killed in the fighting, and a further 20% would die as prisoners of war. And then, in the middle of 1942, the Japanese had an idea. They would take the prisoners from Hong Kong by ship to Japan, and make them work in the mines and the factories and the docks so that Japanese men could be freed up to join the army and the other foot services. The first shipment went fine of British people. The second shipment, again, of British POWs. That was sunk by an American submarine halfway to Japan. 
with an enormous loss of life. Almost 900 people died. A further 200 people died after that of shock and exposure and exhaustion and disease they picked up on the ship. That was the Lisbon Maru. By the end of the war, most of the POWs, the British and the Canadians in particular, were in these camps in Japan. And there the conditions were very bad. There was little food, there was hard work. It was a very tough situation until they were liberated by American forces right at the end of World War II after the Japanese had surrendered following the dropping of the atomic bombs. Hong Kong prisoners of war underwent many hardships, it is still not as horrible as the events that took place during the construction of the Burma Death Railway. The Burma Railway was a route used by the Japanese to send goods to the Indian battlefield. Approximately 60,000 local force laborers and prisoners of war from Singapore were set out to build this railway. By the end of the war, over 12,000 of the Allied POWs had died of the maltreatment, starvation and disease. However, the depth of the suffering of Hong Kong's POWs was bad enough. In 1947, the British government opened a new cemetery in Hong Kong for the members of the garrison, who had lost their lives between 1941 and 1945, and the scale of the loss is still visible to anyone who visits today.